Hi guys, uh, uh, welcome to uh, our series of interviews from American Thief, and I want to introduce now the irrevocable, uh, unequivocal, and unresistible Madeline McRae. <laughs> How are you, Madeline? <laughs> How are you? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's so good to talk with you, Michelle, about American Thief. I'm so glad we're doing this. It's awesome to have you here, and I'm especially excited because today's Friday and our film is playing at theaters. So I'm really, really happy that we get the word out and people watch this and get a little bit of about like what was going behind the scenes. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's really remarkable that this journey that we started what back in 2015 and now, you know, we, it, we get a chance to, to share it with the audience and all of the great things that you guys were uh, intending to, uh, you know, to bring to the audience. So I'm really excited about it. Cool, Madden. So tell us a little bit about more about you, like your background as an actor, as an activist, like give us the insights and how did you connect with us to make this film? Great. Thank you for asking that. Well, I've been an actress for the better part of 30 years and uh, the, most of my work uh, up until about, I'd say six, seven years ago was uh, stage work, which I absolutely love. Um, I can say that there was a time when I thought I would want to do film because, you know, there's nothing like the stage, you know, and that live feedback that you get from an audience. Um, and I still feel that very much. And later on began to uh, get some opportunities to work in some short films and really started to appreciate working on camera and you know just being on the set because it's so it's such a rich rich experience and you learn so much about what it takes to literally um you know produce a film to you know what everyone's responsibilities are on set and so you know the product that we see at the end of the process is magic but everything that goes into it so i love both i love both and um i'm also a writer so i have um and over the years i wrote a um a one woman play about bessie coleman a dream to fly and uh, because i wanted to celebrate the life of the first female black pilot in the world and that was, uh, that's been a journey. Uh, and it was done intentionally to educate and inform, to inspire and empower people to go after their dreams and to understand what it's like to really believe in what you want to accomplish as an artist. And um, so there was, there was all of that. So I was always able to put, you know, to, to feed off of that energy myself, you know, um, going after it, because it's not easy. And you brought, in, you brought in a lot of that. Like, it was not only representing, like, as an actor, but you were bringing a lot of yourself into this film, into this story as well, precisely uh, because of, like, what your, 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 your experience and your storytelling, even as a writer. So could you talk a little bit about more about that? Like, how, how did you, Madeline, uh, the woman, the activist, uh, uh, mix in together with the actor in this movie? Oh, wow. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I sure can. It was, it was really a unique opportunity that you guys afforded me. And I really, really mean that. Um, because, uh, on act, you know, being an artist and actress uh, and being and having activism um, in building awareness around domestic violence. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I'm a mother and I'm a grandmother. I have two grown black sons and seven grandchildren. And everything that is happening in the world around us um, has always, you know, been a deep concern of mine, especially um, raising African American sons in this society. So um, it was being able to express um, the things that deeply concern me that are literally in my DNA when because of the scene and i don't know if you'll show a clip of that uh during this interview but um the scene that um we did was with me having a meeting at my house as a community activist and and that um really triggered a lot of the things that i know that 
black boys and men are so demonized in our society um, and it takes them to a place um, within their own spirit where um, the way that they are portrayed in you know through politicians through you know through the media and all of that and it leads to these police shootings right where our society doesn't mind they they really support because these uh, narratives have been so deeply entrenched into their psyche and uh, there's a, you know a deep level of you know of, uh, of mistrust misunderstanding mm -hmm. when it comes down to that um you know you go back as far as the central park five amadou diallo sean bell and at the time that we met of course was um, trayvon martin you know and what was going on with him so having been uh, all my life having to be a mother to have the talk with my sons is something that's always infuriated me because it's like our kids should be able to move through the world mm -hmm. and society like anyone else without fear and um but we all know that that's not the case you know um so i'm you know so this was this really really um put me in a position to bring all of that together with my training as an actor and with the work that I do, because I know that hurt people hurt other people. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you don't take into consideration the things, the experiences that some of our youth have uh, had, then, um, and you literally call them things like super predators, um then you know it's it really seeps into their soul and so that scene that we um uh, filmed with uh, jason mm -hmm. was so uh visceral and because you know there were um things and and language that he used in it that triggered me in a way that um was very real and i i don't get an opportunity as an actor i don't know of many actors that might get the opportunity to do that but that's what we're supposed to do we're supposed to draw from our experiences mm -hmm. and um and because i have mentored um members of the bloods myself and um you know so that i know what a lot of them experience what they go to and how deeply um misunderstood they are and uh you know in the pain that they've experienced um coming into it um, I have to always give kudos to my dear friend, uh, Shira Lee, uh, who was uh, your teacher at Columbia University, uh, because you, one of the really amazing things about this opportunity and how it came about, because it was very unexpected to me, um, you approached her and told her that you were looking for someone who could represent, authentically represent um, a member of the community and um, as an activist. And she was aware, she was aware of my work as an actor and she was also aware of the work that I was doing uh, to raise awareness around uh, domestic abuse. And she recommended me and wow, you know, yeah. here we are. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Thank you. I love that so much that Shirley connected us. Uh, it's so yes. special that she, she, she always knows what she's doing and she was, yes. uh, Wow, you, this answer that you gave, there's so much to unpack there. And I love everything that you brought to the table. I, I want to make it objective, so I apologize if I'm just sticking to one, one, one thing, but I would love to like really dive into that scene. I think it's a really special scene, perhaps one of the best scenes we have in the film. Uh, can you give a little bit more about that? The scene that we're talking about is, a, is like a four minute scene that there's an actual intervention happening in, in, in the film and uh, our main characters watch. And uh, Diop is the grandson of, of Madeline McRae, which her grandma Mason. So could you just tell us a little bit more about this scene? Like, how, how was it all fiction? Was it, is it a documentary? How real is it? Please give us a little bit more insight on that. Absolutely. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, part, it, it's the documentary <clears throat> part of it was just that section that you guys shot, as you know. Um, the scene was myself and a, a group of women who were conducting an intervention for a young man who really thought that he deserved to die. Mm -hmm. That he, um, that we were trying to save, literally save a monster, mm -hmm. okay? 
And that was the core of when I felt, you know, the most anger that rose up in me because I know for a fact that that is how so many of these young people who are dying in the streets by killing each other, quite frankly, mm -hmm. you know, feel that they literally are not gonna live uh, to see 18 or 20 because their experience and, and what they have, what's been given to them in life, they've had to deal with those cards. And I'm not forgiving any violence. Mm -hmm. I wanna make that clear. I certainly wanna see us get to a point where, you know, we're saving our young people, our young boys, our young girls, and where they have have an opportunity to see themselves and see a future for themselves. And, um, and so that part of it was not, uh, was, was me acting and bringing my craft into it, but also bringing the spirit of who I am and what I feel for those young people. Um, and actually the uh, young artist that was in the film with me, Jason Davis, uh, is someone that myself, uh, I mentored along with a dear friend, uh, Terry Williams. And so we stepped into their world and we know what that was like. So applying that in the scene, Diop, who is playing my grandson and is one of the hackers, the young hackers in the film, um, my, uh, my role of trying to in, in, uh, influence him about what he needed to do with his life to, uh, because as a grandparent, and I think that that's where it gave me this chance to like be the grandparents that doesn't d really understand like what's going on with these computers and what the heck are you doing spending so much time, you know, um, on a screen when you should be doing something because you are one of the ones that do have the opportunity to make something of yourself and to do something better with your life. So that I, I could put all of that together because I have grandsons. They're 26 and 27 years old. And, uh, and, that, and, and so it was a beautiful, beautiful thing to be able to, and those young actors, so Tone Cruz and, you know, Diop, they, they, they are just such an amazing, uh, talent. I'm so looking forward to what they will be doing in the future with their careers, whether they're writing or whether they're acting. They're just, you know, very um, great role models and representatives of a generation. We can almost say it's a family movie because not only your fictional grandsons in the, the movie, but your, your real grandson is in the movie and also your son. Can you tell us a little bit more, more about that? Yes, yes. I, I will say that um, that was just like a total honor. I mean, how often does that happen? Come on. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for that. Um, you know, I'll tell you a funny story about the, my son actually portrays the father of the main character who was, I don't, should I say it? I mean, it is like right yeah, there. Yeah, you can say it. It's, so, I it's can in the say trailer. Yeah. That is killed by a policeman and shot point blank. And as a little boy, he saw his father get shot. And so that father is actually my son, Tarashe McRae. And um, I, because I was on set and I remember the night we were filming it and Miguel, the director, said to me, because he's such a sensitive soul, as you all are, um, Madeline, are you sure you want to watch this scene? Because literally, you know, you're going to be seeing him get shot. And I'm like, sure. I mean, I'm an actor. I know my son's going to get up off the ground. I know what that scene represents, but I know it's not my son actually being shot. Well, when the film, you know, was released recently in festivals and such, I was telling my grandsons, I said, you know, you need to watch it you know, Tarashe's oldest son, he's 20, 25, 26. And I said, you really need to watch it. I had not considered, and this is what I mean about how real these issues are that you guys brilliantly weaved into American Thief, is that it didn't dawn on me that it would be troublesome for his son to literally watch his father be killed on camera, even though it was a film. So he saw the trailer and he never really talked to me about how that made him feel. And I just happened to catch it at the last minute and, and, and he you know, did share that. Now, uh, Tarasha has another, a younger son who's 14 and I got on the phone and I called him and I was like, oh my God, 
do not have him watch this film because I forgot how it would probably trigger them, especially in the environment that we're in right now, where they're being exposed to what's, you know, the reality of that scene. So that was, um, you know, so that was a lesson learned for myself, you know, that I could absorb it a certain way because I'm an actor and I know this is real, but for the, you know, for them watching it, that it was a whole nother experience. And I thought that that was such a poignant uh, moment because again, the, this depicts what actually happens, right? We're seeing children on the news right now, um, watching their dads be dragged out and get shot in front of them. And anyone who thinks that this is not a permanent scar on their soul is sorely mistaken because it is. And it sets a tone for the way in which they will embrace the society that they have to move around in. So I just think that there are so many elements in this film in the, that, that are incredible, not to, you know, and then of course the fact that what brings us all together is this technology, is the fact that we are truly being, um, you know, watched constantly. My God, Big Brother has been something that, that, you know, we've been talking about. I mean, I grew up in the 70s in Harlem and, you know, we've been hearing about this forever. And now to be here in 2020 or 2015 when this, when you first started the film and to know that these are real matters, right? And even now we've got activists in the street um, fighting for racial justice, fighting for equality, doing all of these, you know, really important work. And, um, and literally they're being captured on screen, right? And they're doing facial recognition. And so these activists are currently being arrested weeks later, months later. So I, I think that the way that this was, you know, brought to bear in American Thief is absolutely brilliant. And uh, I would recommend that everybody, everybody, sees this film because we it's it, it is a teaching film it's entertaining you know um i love ben's character the man in the van you know he's wake up you know uh, because we do need people to genuinely wake up and just stop saying that they're woke because it means nothing uh thanks for sharing madden and i feel like we can um uh talk about 10 new subjects just from your last uh, uh, response, which is amazing that you could share and, and, and how it all connects to our film and how you're able to, uh, as an actor, really like externalize that. That's really amazing. I feel like you brought a lot to our film. It was incredible. Hey, um, you guys gave me the chance to do it and I just wanted to do my very best work. I wanted to make you all proud and really represent the character that you brought me in to portray. Madeline, I just have one more question for you. Uh, could you give any insights or any lessons uh, of the modern world of, of uh, being an actor today? How do you get gigs? Like, how can you help a struggling actor out there? Well, first thing, first and foremost, I say the same thing to my own grandson, Kahlo, who's also in American Thief, is know the craft, respect the craft, do the work, um, understand um, what roles you are right for. Watch TV, watch film, study what people are doing, take classes. And it doesn't matter whether you're a young actor or you're somewhere in your midlife and it's something that you've always wanted to do. I mean, the beauty is these days there are more um, roles, more film and writers who are writing roles, I should say, for actors who are older, for example. And the same rules apply. You have to take classes. You have to, you have to get comfortable on camera because, as you said, you know, we are in, in the age that we're in right now as a result of the pandemic. Uh, all of our auditions are self-submits online because casting you know, isn't coming together in, in a room right now, maybe in some instances, but for the most part, everything is being done 
online. So you have to understand your lighting. You have to understand your sound. So there are, there are classes that you can take for that. It's very, very competitive. It was always competitive. It's not going to change. But you'll really um, increase your chances of being um, uh, cast in a project if you come to the table uh, prepared not only with what you can do because you could be doing a wonderful job with the craft of acting but if you can't be seen because you're not lit properly and you can't be heard unfortunately time is of the essence you know producers and casting directors they're under a lot of pressure so they have to get the job done and if they don't see what they need to see in the, even in the technical aspect right away they're liable to just you know move it along and not get it uh, not even see your great work so i think those are the main things it's these things are principles they're standard you know learn the craft and now you also have to be a bit of a of a technician as well <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time and doing this today with us it was really amazing Oh, this is it. This is listen. Anytime you and Miguel or Missy Hernandez are doing anything, I don't care what it is. You want me to read the phone book? <laughs> Call me. <laughs> Amazing. And thank you guys so much for watching. And remember that we're still playing out there in virtual cinemas and at select theaters for limited time. So if you if you want to watch the film, go to filmmovement.com dash American Thief. All right, guys, have a good one. Bye. Awesome. Bye, everybody. <laughs>